Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is my wife Kim with Team Copperhead. And in this very special Valentine's Day romantic episode, we are going to be servicing the drive side on Copperhead. That's right, we're going to be taking it apart and showing you what it's like to service a real life 250 pound combat robot. So let's get started. So when you're watching BattleBots on TV, you might not get a sense of scale on how big these are and also how heavy they are. Copperhead here is sitting about 250 pounds, and hopefully by us taking this apart and showing you the servicing of it, you get a better idea of just how heavy they are and how complicated they are to work on. So what we're going to do in this video is just kind of act like one of the drive motors is out on this side and I'll show you what it takes to get this thing taken apart, get to the motor, replace it and then put it back together. So let's go ahead and start by taking off the top, getting out the battery and taking this thing apart. Since we did have the horizontal bar configuration for this year, the first step to taking this apart, if we have the horizontal configuration, is we actually have to cut this in half. So this has already been cut. We just use like an angle grinder and a cutoff wheel. So you can see this has been separated. So we're gonna take this drive side off. The first thing that we need to do to get Copperhead apart is to take off the top panel. There are eight 5 8 inch bolts holding the top on, so we grab the uh, trusty DeWalt Ugga Dugga and get these off, and then we can remove the top plate. Now we need to remove the battery pack. I guess technically speaking, we don't need to remove the battery pack, but whenever we really do anything with the bot, we remove the batteries. The batteries have four leads coming off of them because it's really two separate packs kind of combined together. So all of these connections are taped. So we need to remove the tape and then unplug the connections. And then once we get that done, we can lift out the battery. The next step is to unplug the wires from the drive side. We have two things that we're concerned about. We have the power, and then we have the signal going into the ESC. Both of those need to be unplugged. Normally, these would be fully taped and zip-tied, but this version of the bot, we had previously used it in some other application, so these things weren't done. But normally, these things would all be taped and zip-tied in place. So before we actually remove the drive side, we learned this little trick, which was on the opposite side to loosen the nut on the drum just a little bit. That'll make the shaft of the weapon drum just a little bit flexible so that we can lift off the drive side a little bit easier. So now comes the fun part. With only two people, we kind of have to maneuver the bot around a little bit. So I find it's easiest to move it up on one end. That gives us access to the bolts on the underneath side, and then there's another one on the back side. Once all of those are loosened, then we can take off the bolt that goes into the weapon drum and the weapon axle, and then theoretically the top should just kind of lift right off, or the drive side should just lift right off from the rest of the bot. Notice how I said theoretically the drive side should just pull off. Every single time we take this apart, it's a little bit different. Um, it depends on how the fight went, you know, if things got a little bit tweaked, but it is a relatively tight fit. The shaft fits very close into that front drive pocket. And so it takes a little bit of finagling. I did have a sledgehammer nearby just in case, which we do have to use from time to time, but just with enough wiggling, it will eventually kind of break free and then pull out. I got it. And here is what Copperhead looks like when one of the drive sides is off. As you can see, there's not a whole lot connecting the two sides, just a couple of wires. And this uh, weapon system is still 100% functional. 
this weapon system is completely independent. So if we were going to service the weapon, it's just a matter of undoing the two bolts on the bottom, taking off this belt, which would mean taking off this whole axle shaft thing here, taking off the belt, and then this whole module can be removed and then we can service the weapon. So yeah, that is what Copperhead looks like when it's apart. Let's go work on the drive side on this now. So just how heavy is one drive side from Copperhead? Just under 60 pounds. Heavy weights are heavy. So here is the left drive side of Copperhead. As you can hear, I'm starting to get a little bit winded. Um, this is the VESC. The motor controller that sits on one side is attached with Velcro underneath, and then we have a zip tie holding in place. So that is our shock mounting. Wires are coming off of it. The motor is on the underneath side. So to get the motor out, we need to undo these three bolts, lift this off, and then we can have access to the motor underneath. The threads of pretty much every single bolt in Copperhead is doused with thread locker. We use Loctite 243 just to make sure nothing rattles loose. So it definitely takes an impact wrench to get all of these bolts out. So here is the motor module itself. Everything is detached. So all we would have to do is pull this off, undo these wires, undo the tape, and we have our motor ready to replace. Or actually, we could just undo these four. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to replacing the motor. And then obviously, if we want to replace the VESC, we just need to cut this zip tie, pull this off, redo the wiring, things like that. So. Let's um, get this put back together. Uh, we're not gonna do Loctite, but normally we would add Loctite to all of these locations and then just kinda do the same thing in reverse order. So you might be wondering what it takes to take one of the wheels off. I'm not gonna do that because it's actually a real pain, but if we flip this around, let me take off this chain. So we have a bolt right here that runs down this large center post. We would take this off. Um, this, is, this has more Loctite than bolt, I think, at this point. So this is really difficult to get off. But we would take this off. But this whole wheel is held in place by this chain. We can't just pull it off. So we actually have to undo this little, let me see. Yeah, you can kind of see it down inside there, maybe right there. There's this little um, bolt right there that holds the intermediary side on. So that goes through. <laughs> Stupid thing. That goes through into this sprocket. So then this whole sprocket comes off. This whole intermediate side can then slide out. So that's what it takes to get the intermediate side. This is something that we don't service very often. Um, it is a big pain. It's really hard, you can kind of see, to get in to access this little head of the bolt inside there. So that's what it would take to service the intermediate drive and to swap out a wheel. And yes, we do have to pretty much take off the whole drive side to replace a wheel. So getting it back together is pretty much the exact same thing that you saw in reverse order. And I know I said that I wasn't going to use Loctite, but it just feels really weird putting Copperhead back together and not using Loctite. So I had to. So we threw some Loctite on there, got it back together, and um, yeah, now we're ready to put that back into the rest of the robot. I'm not really sure if it's harder to pull off the drive side or put it back in. They kind of each have their challenges. When you're putting this back on, there's really not that much to hold on to because it kind of slides inside the body. So the only thing you have to hold on to is that big fin, which is sharp and kind of awkward, and then the huge wheel, which of course spins every time you try and grab onto it. So the strategy here is to just find that little cup in the front and make sure it gets into the weapon shaft first. Once that kind of gets seated, then everything else will kind of fall into place. But at this exact same time, you got to make sure you're not pinching any wires or, you know, 
know, no fingers are in the way. So it's a little bit tricky, but it's not too bad, especially in this orientation because gravity is doing most of the work. So yeah, copperhead is all back together. Some of you might be wondering why we don't just undo these bolts and just kind of slide the side off. Well, it gets a little tricky. All the weight is resting on this. So the body of the bot kind of wants to rest down. We have 60 pounds up here in the weapon that kind of wants to rest on it. So just simply pulling this side off is really, really difficult. You kind of want it vertically and then just to lift it off like what we did previously. However, if you have this bot on the edge of the um, lifty cart that we have or on the edge of a workbench, you can definitely lift it off the side. But as soon as you lift it off, it kind of drops down. So anyway, with two people, I think this is the better way to go. But there are many ways to skin this cat. You can take this part a lot of different ways. So the final things that we need to do to get Copperhead ready for battle is reconnect this drive side. So we'd reconnect it to the connector down there. We connect the sensor and all this other good stuff, obviously. Every single connector gets fully taped with electrical tape before we go into the box. I'm not gonna do that in this video because I don't like doing that when the bot's in storage, but every single little thing gets taped multiple times, zip tied, all this stuff will get tucked inside. We'll put on the top, lock tight everything, and it'll be ready to put into the arena. So hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea of what is involved in servicing a combat robot. Realistically, it's pretty much the same as doing a smaller robot. It's just everything's a little bit heavier, a little bit sharper, and a little bit more dangerous. So you just have to take a little bit more precautions and care when doing so. I think that's um, about all we have for this video. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. I think we have about, um, what was it, 10,872 fights left, so be sure to check out the fight recaps for those, and we'll see you in the next video. Follow us on Facebook for any updates to the channel, and we'll see you again. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>